there's no, no, no speed. speed control. It's either mm -hmm. full speed or lopsided. of materialism. So the separation is occurring in mid-Atlantean times. Remember I talked about this time when all these beings that are human were off in other planetary spheres and they were finding it very difficult to incarnate. This is that period of time we're talking about. Abel represents what becomes that feminine wisdom, whereas Cain represents the male wisdom. And we've seen that the etheric body is the opposite sex. The soul is a sort of merging of the two. We can see that in a lot of uh, the birth of Venus painting by Botticelli. Mm -hmm. And then the spirit is sexless. So we have these two streams in humanity, the race of Cain and the race of Abel, and how they come about. Now, um, each of these also represent different kinds of thinking. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to come to this, but I'll mention it right now. Steiner points out that at this time, in the story of Adam and Eve, he talks about the human being as being this combination, male and female. It's often translated as male and female, he created them, but he says no, it's he created this female-male combination. But now they begin to separate, and this separation was necessary to separate spiritual wisdom from scientific knowledge. And not from self-conscious, not for self-consciousness? Not yet. Oh. It's coming. But so the brain, he says, becomes an image of the male. And deeper aspects, so we can say soul, is the, the feminine. And because um, the brain is often associated with the spirit, we often have the spirit taking on masculine properties in art and the soul as feminine pictured. Okay. So, um, this masculinity to commits itself to the earth. This is the Cain story of tilling the earth. And although they derive themselves from Elohim, um, they derive themselves from Elohim to during Old Moon with these Elohim that were slightly behind, that had not accomplished this ability to break through wisdom and fire to not want their own personal knowledge. So in this way, we can say that the coming of Christ to the earth for redemption is something that has to do more with the Cain stream and that fratricide. Here we can see Abel and Cain in, in uh, the night wisdom and the day wisdom. I'm taking something from um, Bible Hub, I think it is, which is an interlinear. You can see the word Adam here. Here is the Hebrew. And here is its translation as man, which is interesting. And here is this female male, which is often translated as he created them male and female. But he says, this and doesn't belong here. It's created he, female, male. And the him is referring to who created. And then we have um, in their likeness. Um, so out of uh, mankind, again, this likeness comes now instead of out of the alien, and this is Seth. And begotten after mankind. So it's very interesting. Here it's translated Adam, but the same word up here is traded, translated as mankind. 
So Steiner says, Seth is the first who is really out, who has heredity, who is the first out of the likeness of the parents. And so we are now beginning with Seth. The sexual separation is complete, and we can now have um, offspring that are the product of the parents and have the likeness of the parents. And we have to start asking the question, this is changing today. This is the fulfillment of all of this period. So there are characters, uh, characteristics of Seth and Abel um, which have this living thinking. They are beings that take direct inspiration, um, so directly inspired from the God. And Cain, who has to work differently through the earth, he is a gatherer of knowledge. So the pictures that come from the priestly lineage of Abel and Seth are used as symbols in the Cain lineage. Now this is a very interesting part that comes up next, that the, the daughters of men, and here's this word Adam again, um, are seen uh, by the sons of God, and they are taken as wise, and out of this, mighty men come about who bring great wickedness. China says what's going on there is that the lineages of Abel and Cain were meant to be separate. It's going off to distant lands to be away from Abel and Seth. Um, that it was sinful for them to merge, but the lineage of Abel found these daughters of Cain to be fair and took wives of them. And he says in Vedic terminology, these are the Rakshasas who bring about the great evil of Atlantis and cause its destruction. So when we look at our future lives with robots, as we tried to do a little bit last night, we can ask the question, are we repeating something of this Rakshasas? Are the sons of humans going to look upon the daughters of robots as fair and take upon themselves wives from them? And what would come of such a union? How can this happen? Is it a machine? How yeah. would they have sex? Pardon? Advanced technology. <laughs> Where are we going with in vitro fertilization? Could we conceive of something in the future where something happens? Or maybe it has nothing to do with physical bodies. But what's going on when we have sex with robots? <laughs> and if you think this is crazy, well, come tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she, you know, a man's penis may be caught in a, a machine, you know? <laughs> so, I, think, I think the movie, The Stepford Wives. <laughs> Stepford Wives, that's about a two yeah. decades ago. But, yeah. So tonight we looked at the evolution, us. we looked at the reunification with the moon and later the sun. We looked at women's infertility. We looked at the story of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, the Rakshasas, and our future relationship with robots that might be a recapitulation of what brought about the destruction of Atlantis. Of Atlantis. So tomorrow, we should gather here at 9.30 for a little social time, and then we will start at 10 o'clock I mean, we will be looking at this question of sex with robots in a much more intense way. <laughs> Again, without any porn. And um, we will be looking at the story of Hephaestus. And we will not do demonstrations, no. Um, and preparations of our own time. And then we will do a eurythmy, and then we will be looking at electricity and evil and so on.
So if you want tea and coffee, you have to bring your own, because I don't think there's any tea and coffee. Thank you for that. <laughs> right. So I will stick around for a little bit. It's 9, 10 at the moment. So I'm about 10 minutes behind oh, okay. where I thought I would be. Um, so I'm sorry for that, but um, thank you. And we dive into today and where technology is and just you know where it might be in a couple years. But we're going to try to look at electricity and resonance and how one might approach building what are called Keeley machines or Strotter machines. Speak up. Speak up even more. Okay, thank you. Um, and to start with today, oh, and, and as part of this experiencing of human rhythms and to come to the concepts of fields and, and resonance, We'll have you with me right after this session, and we'll have it again in the afternoon. I find it totally amazing that all of you have sat through essentially three hours of lecture <laughs> and have gotten through it all. So I don't want to destroy your etheric bodies by just lecturing all day today. So, But we will start today. Uh, I do want to try to go through. Um, something on the mythologies, but just to tell you where we've been, and I think everyone has kind of heard all the recaps, but we looked at, from a cosmic perspective and where Earth is going and how the beings who will be at the human stage on Jupiter are approaching us now and they're being pushed up from below. And this guy, Rudolf Steiner, says that by coming, being pushed up from below, they have to pass through Araman's realm. And so they approach us with an Aramonic character. And they are here with us now. We looked at the question of can we become their angels as those who are our angels today on Old Moon, grew to love us. These beings will have a similar relationship, yes? Will you be able to speak a little bit on uh, the, the beings at the center of the Earth? That's no. Oh, no. That's, there's nine levels. Nine in, layers. As there's the nine earth. out. And that's a very, very complicated and extremely difficult. And I, 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 there's just way too much material to cover today to, to get there. I, I, I really want to focus on rhythms and trying to understand what electricity is. Uh, it, as you'll see when we get into that discussion, this understanding of the atom and electricity are the most important things for us to accomplish today. Can you talk a bit about sexuality and in the future? Yes, we will actually talk a little about that. Okay. Um, but uh, I, I, yes. Because you said you would talk about it. Yes, <laughs> and that's, that is what part of today is. I've had to cut it back some, unfortunately, just in lieu of time, because otherwise I'd be up here for 90 minutes and I want much more interaction today, like we're doing now, okay. questions, so feel free. Yeah. Today, as I'm going along, stop me anytime and, and uh, ask a question, it's fine. We can also invite you back. You, yes. Right? And yes. Do more. Um, although, after this, I promised my wife I would start focusing on writing the book. I now have about 500 pages of quotes from Rudolf Steiner. And I have to cut that down and start my own text, which is only about 100 pages right now. What's the name of the book and the theme? Uh, the Role of Technology in Human Evolution. And you're aware of uh, Talbot's? Uh, Steve Talbot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which one His do you book. mean? Well, his first book. Okay. Yeah. All right, we talked about evolution and now how we are in devolution. And this is the period that what we experience of the world 